Uh, so hello and welcome. My name is Jim Wagoner and I'm serving as the president of the Rotary Club of Davenport this year. Uh, 113 years ago this month, a service organization called Rotary was born. Rotary is open to all people regardless of race, gender, color, creed, religion, or political preference. Rotary's primary motto is service above self. The organization has 1.2 million members and over 33,000 clubs worldwide. The Rotary Club of Davenport was the 34th club and began in 1911. It is still going strong today with over 100 members that consists of top community leaders including Davenport Mayor Frank Klipsch. In addition to giving out approximately $50,000 of scholarships every year to students in Davenport, our club also does various service projects locally, nationally, and internationally. In December, with the help of a Rotary District grant, we gave $10,000 and put in over 32 hours of volunteer work to help reupholster the auditorium chairs at Madison Elementary School. Just a couple weeks ago, January 25th, Rotarians throughout the Quad Cities came together and presented a check to Miracle Field for $65,000. Miracle Field is a baseball field for athletes with special needs, and it will be built right here in Davenport. At this time, I would like all Rotarians to please stand and be recognized for your service to others. If you would like to learn more about Rotary, you are invited to join us at any one of our meetings. The Rotary Club of Davenport meets on Mondays at noon, usually at the Outing Club. You can also visit our website at davenportrotary.org to learn more. It is now my pleasure to introduce the general manager of Rhythm City Casino. Please give a warm welcome to Mo Heider. Well, good afternoon. My name is Mo Heider. I'm the general manager here at Rhythm City Casino Resort. On behalf of the entire Rhythm City family, I want to welcome you all and tell you what an honor it is to host this event again and hear from Mayor Klipsch about his accomplishments and the exciting vision he has for Davenport. 2017 was an exciting year for the entire Rhythm City family. Our first full year in this location meant a significant increase in attendance and revenues. And as our revenue grows, it increases contributions not only to our license holder and partner, the RDA, but also our tax payments to the state of Iowa, Scott County, and city of Davenport. Our attendance is increasing because of the quality of our facility, the richness of the experience we provide for our guests, and the high visible location. We are excited about the growth potential here and on the Elmore Corners development. We also appreciate the opportunity to work with the mayor and the city to attract new business to this attractive location. We're also incredibly proud of what we have built here and believe that this is a facility our entire community can be proud of. However, none of this could have been possible without the strong working relationship that we have built with the mayor, the city council, the staff, specifically uh, Corey Spiegel, Tom Warner, Brandon Wright, Bruce Berger, Matt Flynn, to name a few. Their help and cooperation was vital to the success of this facility. I look forward to hearing from Mayor Klipsch in a few minutes, but let me first be the first to say that I'm excited for what the future holds for our city. With the business-minded leadership, I know that Davenport will continue on the right path. I'm especially excited to see continued economic development in North Davenport to complement our efforts here at Rhythm City. This area is prime for development, and I know it will continue to grow into a destination for Davenport residents and visitors alike for decades to come. Mayor Klipsch, welcome back to Rhythm City Casino Resort, and thank you all for being here today. 
And now, will everyone please rise for the Honor Guard presentation? to join us in thanking the students from the Davenport Community Schools one more time, please. Would you join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you, Chief Sikorsky and Chief Bickford. I invite you to remain standing and to join me in prayer. Our Lord God Almighty, you are great and awesome. There is none like you. No one can fathom the breadth and width and height of your love, yet you invite us to come to you as our Heavenly Father. And for that, we're truly grateful. We thank you for who you are and what you've done on our behalf. You've blessed us with many things. You've given us a community with great diversity, opportunity, and growing unity. We truly are more together, yet we are even more than that with you, for with you all things are possible. As we gather today, we say thank you for the blessings of this past season. There is much to celebrate. Yet as we look forward to the season ahead, we do so with expectancy, looking to you, the one who was and is and is to come, to go before us. We thank you for the leaders you have placed in position to serve. We lift them before you, and we pray, God, that you would continue to grant them wisdom and grace and courage to lead well. And may we all act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, it's my pleasure to invite Mayor Toms of Rock Island to come to the platform for our next introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> It's going to be a little chilly and snowy probably when we leave, but uh, we should have a good warm uh, talk and, and listen to some great conversation here this morning or this afternoon. Well, once again, thank you, Sean. My name is Mike Tomes, Mayor of Rock Island. It's both my honor and my privilege to be asked to introduce the speaker today. As one of several mayors here in the Quad, new mayors in the Quad Cities that took office in 2017. I know I have really appreciated not only working with Mayor Clips, but on several projects, but also being able to confer with him on the different issues and ideas that have come up over the last nine months. As many of you have known before, being elected mayor, Frank Clips worked at the Scott County YMCA for over 27 years. First as CEO, later as president of the YMCA Youth and Family Foundation. Previously, his time, his, before his time here, Scott, Scott County, he also uh, served in various roles uh, within the, uh, the YMCA uh, organization in New Mexico, Naperville, and Tucson. Now, along with his duties as mayor of the Quad Cities, uh, mayor of Quad Cities, mayor of Davenport, <laughs> He also, see, I, I've got you elevated already. We got this place merged. And <laughs> thanks, thanks. We're working well together. That's how well we work. Uh, he also uh, runs an independent consultation and professional service firm and serves on adjunct leadership studies professor at St. Ambrose University. He has served on numerous boards and commissions, including the Palmer College of Chiropractic, Quad City uh, Sol Solars? Solars, German American Society Center, and the Quad City Culture Trust, along with now also being co-chair of the MRCTI organization, which will host its annual meeting here later this year. He has a bachelor's degree in health and physical education, a master's with emphasis in sports psychology, and in 2015, he received the honorary, honorary doctorate in public service from St. Ambrose University. Since first taking office two years ago, Mayor Clips has been a strong leader for the city of Davenport and a strong supporter of the Rock Island Arsenal, which is being represented today, and the Quad City region as a whole. He has represented our area well, not only locally, but also nationally and internationally, coming back from Germany not too long ago. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to present my friend, my colleague, Mayor Frank Clips. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Tomes, and my recent promotion to Mayor of the Quad Cities. Thank you very much for that. Um, 
uh, my style is going to be more this, uh, discussion and, and activities that we have going on. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here. You know, there's uh, obviously Jim Wagner and Rotarians. Thank you all, the Rotarians, for being here. Jim, thank you for your work as president of Rotary. Mo Heider, been a good friend for a long time. Thank you for hosting again this year in this beautiful venue. Um, the Honor Guard are special people. As I talk to both of the chiefs today, uh, both Chief Bickford and Chief Sikorsky, these are the ones that really care and work hard. They're the special people that get to be on that Honor Guard. And you could tell they took that very seriously. They were here about 10.30 practicing over and over again to make sure they do it right. And the, of course, the Davenport area high schools. They weren't just, they were Davenport schools, Davenport public schools, but also Assumption High School. So we had literally kids from all of those different schools participating, and that's really the, the core of what we want to do in our community is bringing everybody together and finding out one answer that serves everybody in our community. Um, of course, the chiefs, uh, we have two outstanding chiefs, Jim Bickford and Paul Sikorsky, uh, do a great job of leading those first responder elements that we have that keeps our communities and our families safe, but also just solid men leading the people that they are entrusted to lead uh, in supporting our community. So thank you for your involvement as well. Senior Pastor Sean Cosin from Heritage Church, thank you for your um, encouraging words as we began our discussion today. And of course, Mike, for your introduction. Um, I think that's important as well. You know, we have a lot of people to thank. Uh, obviously, I'm going to forget some, but there's a couple of mayors. Mayor Gallagher is here as well. Thank you from Bettendorf. Uh, Tony Kenobi from, as the uh, chair of the Scott County Board of Supervisors. Don Doucette as chancellor of our director, leader, big guy at Eastern Iowa Community College District are all very important um, as well. Colonel Talkie, Ken Talkie is here. Ken is basically a mayor of Rock Island Arsenal. He's the garrison commander, so he has a similar role to what we play as mayors uh, here on the, in Iowa and Illinois. Thank you, my friend, for being here. Art Tate as superintendent of schools um, as well being here. But I also want to make sure we understand, we talked about, and Mike, thank you for saying, and others, what I've accomplished. I haven't accomplished much of anything. It's all of us in this room accomplishing things. This isn't really about me, and I think uh, that's very important to understand. Uh, if we could have the aldermen that are here, please stand up for a moment, please. I see uh, three of them there, and where's Alderman Grip? There's Alderman uh, Kyle Grip, Alderman McGinnis, Alderman Rawson, and Alderman Cluel are all here. And let's give them a round of applause, if you would, please. Because this can't be done with, without them. Um, you know, I, I get to serve a role of more bringing people together, and together as a group, we make things happen. And uh, so this can't, none of this can happen without them. With that, also, I'd like to have the staff stand up for a minute, please. All the city staff, please stand up. And I know you're spread around in different places. Um, not only do we want to give them applause, but I want to thank specifically Corey Spiegel, our city administrator. Not only was she very instrumental in putting this program together, but she was at the heart of making all the stuff happen that's in the program and in the presentation. Uh, also, uh, Tiffany Thorndike, uh, who helped with this project, uh, is very important. Jennifer Nara, uh, Kurt Allmeyer, uh, all, there's a whole group of people that are here as well that made a difference. Uh, and I think it would be, I would be remiss to not thank my assistant, Nevada, who really was the one steady through all this process bringing it together. So let's give all the staff a big round of applause. <laughs> also, there's a number of, thank you, you please have a seat. The other city, the, uh, the Board of Supervisors that are here, there's a couple others that are here with us today. Mahesh Sharma, who is the County Administrator. And any other, the city, the uh, Scott County Board of Supervisors people, please stand up for a minute, please, as well. Uh, there you are, just thinking at that table. Thank you all for your support, ongoing activity. <laughs> and as you know, I could go on and on here. I see a lot of friends in this community, in this group as well. And I want to thank you all for being here and for your ongoing support throughout not only my career, but more of this time that we have to serve. Um, Rogers Kirk, who I've known since the... First, basically when I first arrived, we helped get that new church built at Third Missionary Baptist Church. And there's many other of you here who have been very instrumental and in, in involved as well. So if I forgot anybody, please forgive me. Um, as we move on to our first, uh, as we move on in this process, again, I mentioned about the, the city staff. And you'll see this is all our Scott County, I mean, the Davenport City Council. There are 10 aldermen representing our city and myself as mayor. 
Um, it, nothing happens as we have very a variety of sessions, and many of you who have been involved with public service in this work, uh, we don't do anything individually, we do everything as a group. That's how things happen. So I think it's important to thank all of them continually because we've got a lot of exciting things that are planned, not only now, but things that have happened. This is a dedicated group of individuals who volunteer their time, and uh, I can say they put in a lot of time and effort to do that, and we have a lot of things to be uh, celebrate and be excited about as well. Our next slide. Last year we talked about um, working smarter and creating c connections, investing in our infrastructure and our future. I want to report that we did everything we said we were going to do as a team and more. And we had economic development, which we'll share as we talk about this, financial growth and stability, exciting news because as taxpayers we are have the fiduciary responsibility to protect your investments and we take that very seriously. Infrastructure, regional collaboration, public safety and riverfront development. I want to say one thing I think about infrastructure investment especially on streets and sewers. We know we're doing well where people start actually would call and complain I can't get around town you're doing so much street repair so and fixing new streets so we must be making progress as we move forward. Our next slide we're going to move into, we had focus and goals, and you can see we committed to being a well-protected community. And we're continuing to be support in, on public safety, and we'll talk about that. Commitment to urban revitalization. We have a beautiful central city, rich heritage. Not only we're we going to talk about the growth around the community, but we think we're also understanding the importance of that as we move forward of revitalizing our central city. This is a beautiful area. We want to draw people back to those beautiful homes up on the bluff and those beautiful homes throughout that central city of Davenport. Investing in our infrastructure, we're going to continue to do that, and of course, riverfront progression. Um, we have strong financial position. So if you're looking at it, many of you have money you invest yourselves, we're a good place to invest. Um, we've added 1.2 million to our general fund reserves, and we have a goal as a, uh, again, total unassigned reserves to over $10 million. That's important because it represents 22.45% of our operating expenditures. If you're going to be as, we're ups and downs in the, in the situations that we face, we're prepared for those, and it helps us with our bond ratings, which is also important. Our council policy is 17 to 25% of having those reserves. And there weren't that many years ago where we had zero reserve. So that's a tremendous improvement over time for a variety of reasons through some tough times and disciplined by my colleagues on the council and all of us to make sure we're doing that properly. The strong financial bond rating is a key indicator. It's a solid bond rating. We're going over to see Standard & Poor's and Moody's uh, very soon and we're anticipating the potentially of an, of an improving bond rating. Why is that important? You've got to go out and get the funds to be able to do that capital improvements that we need. And I'll say one of the things as we talk about this, we borrow about $20 million a year and we pay off $20 million a year. So we're not getting a, a rising piling up of debt. We take what we need, we do the work, we pay it off, and we do more work. And I think that's extremely important. Um, we have a large stable tax base, and we're going to talk about that even growing. Operating liquidity and, and again, moderate. Uh, I think it's important to understand revenue and flexibility in our revenue. And that's important because you don't want to be on the edge all the time. Um, our next slide you can see on the bond ratings, I'm going to spend a lot of time on that and some of our growth issues that you're talking about that you see. But you'll see our budget going up in 50, uh, uh, fiscal 19, about $210 million. And we take that very seriously about how we invest those funds. It's a balanced budget that maintains our council policy to put in the reserves, liquefy, have liquid assets so we can use when needed for emergencies, it leverages funding, and we're going to get four additional police officers. And we're going to talk about that's important as well. And then also a strong tax base growth of 5%. That's important. And that's, by the way, not talking about, that's a very small impact from Kraft. No impact from Sterilite and no impact at this point from Costco. This is just growing internally with what we're doing. And we have a strong tax base growth, which is important. We have a transparent and accountable city. You can see these transparency tools that you see up on your screen, but I think it's important we have an opportunity to open checkbook. You can see, go online and find out how we're spending the money. Open payroll, you can see how we're paying people and what we're being paid. 
and open performance, here's what we said we're going to do, here's the streets we said we're going to fix, how we're doing. And that's important. Everything's available all the time. And I think that's important that you want to know as a city, where you're making an investment, we're making an investment, and are those investments have a return on those investments, and that's important. Our next slide, we talk about citizens engagement. One of the things we highlight on here, one is the first ward meeting, that's the first ward meeting. Um, it's on our first ward in Davenport on the southwest side. I was able to attend that meeting with Alderman Dunn. Uh, but it's important to understand we want people engaged and involved. The other picture showed our Citizens Academy. We've now starting, we're getting ready to start our fourth cohort. And if you haven't signed up yet, have never done this, and you live in Davenport, please do so. It's an amazing opportunity to learn all the insides of this government. You get to take time with both the police and the fire departments and see how those work. Public works, finance, and we actually take you through that. This is the fourth cohort coming up. Um, we, it's also understanding we've had in the last year, talking about engagement, 50 ward meetings that have happened throughout the city in different wards. Um, we think that's back. Go back one slide if you would please. Um, on this one, there we go. Um, 150 neighborhood meetings. Um, boards and commission, over 150 boards and commission meetings. And then on different to that, 75 council meetings, where we have a council meeting, a work session, or a committee of the whole session. There's a lot of opportunity to see everything that we're doing. And we encourage you to do so. We publicize in advance when those are going to be, and then we let you please sit in and hear what we're doing, plus being on TV and on the internet. Um, the other one is, we come up with another engagement, is the, uh, the job fair that's coming up. It's going to be our second mayor's, jobs fair. mayor's job fair. We have a lot of kids involved. Not only this, but you can see just a few pictures of the opportunity. One was at Mid-City High, one was in my office, and one last year was at the mayor's job fair. But we have an opportunity, Real Men Read, Junior Achievement, Men of Integrity, BizTown, school visits, city hall visits. We try to get the kids involved at a young age to understand what's going on. So hopefully they'll want to be involved, and they'll be more inclined to vote when they have an opportunity to do that as well. I can be a part of this. Our next slide shows uh, we're going to move into economic development. And that's also, obviously, those are one of the high things that people talk about. Because we've got two choices, ladies and gentlemen. Things get to be more expensive. We want more things. We have a choice. We either charge you more with more taxes, which we're committed not to do. We cut things that we can't do because we don't have the money. Or we increase our tax base so we can do that and still maintain your tax base. And that's what we're attempting to do. That's economic development. That's what it's about. And you're going to hear some really interesting things as we move forward. That's one of the ribbon cuttings in that picture of the new current hotel, an exciting direct uh, destination hotel downtown. Local business is also important. We understand that the big companies like Kraft, Sterilite, Alcoa, or Arconic, Deer, are very important to our community. But the real backbone of our community are small businesses. So we're working hard both not only with the large to draw those, but also those medium-sized. Because example, but many of you may not have know, have heard of Cobham Industries in Davenport. Cobham has, as an example, 800 employees in Northwest Davenport. And the ones on this list, uh, what I've been doing is, since the beginning in 2016, going out and finding those businesses that impact people's lives. They might have 20 employees, they might have 800 employees, many of which are the core of our community. And we need to make sure that we do that. And these are the ones that I recognized in 2017. It wasn't just me. Council members put up ideas as well that are impacting neighborhoods, impacting families, impacting what we're able to do. And it, I think it's important we received um, local businesses and foundations we recognized as well. And next slide, please, on the, this one. Um, we also did uh, recognize as a, the Small Business Administration City of the Year because we're reaching out to those smaller businesses, making things happen. So we think about the big things. You get the headlines on this Kraft and Sterilite and Costco, but those ones that have 20, 30, 40 employees are equally important, and we're committed to both of those initiatives. You'll see on the next one is the Eastern Iowa Industrial Center. Don't mind me walking around. I just like to do that. Um, hope it's not too distracting. Uh, but the Eastern Iowa Industrial Center, that's the one we've been seeing a lot of attention. On that picture, you can see the airport. You can see the Kraft and Sterilite sites. You know, if you think about that, that area is filling up. And people said, wow, that's like an overnight success. It took 20 years. Okay? So it's one of those things that are coming to fruition, and that has a story as we move further into this presentation. 
That's important to understand. Because these are jobs. These are people. These are capital investment. These are tax base investments that are making a difference. And you can see that layout that we're doing there in the industrial center and that picture with all the things going on. There's some more coming. There's a few more parcels left and working some of the people out there to make that happen. But on the same note, we need to look to the future and we'll talk about that as we move forward a little bit. You can see Kraft Heinz, obviously $203 million worth of investment, 70 acres, 745 jobs. It's even more than we thought when we first started this. We were rolling it out to the community. We were looking at maybe being 500 jobs, and it's now grown over 745, and it's continuing to grow. And it been just being completed and are ready to start ramping up. As an example, it's a major, and, and I think it's important to share about this. Kraft, the Kraft Heinz people, Oscar Mayer people, were closing plants around the country. They've been getting more efficient. And they chose this community to build a new one in. Because they were all rushing. There were people, there were states, cities all over the country trying to get those jobs. And they chose Davenport because of our solid workforce. Where's Jerry Lack? And those guys, yeah, our solid workforce, a great place, and a great economic development team. Bruce Berger, Sarah Ott, Suzanne Knudsen, that whole team and our team be able to make sure we get to draw people here and not go somewhere else. And we have to be competitive on a whole bunch of levels. And a school system that also will draw people into this community. Um, our next job is the Sterilite plant. Another $200 million investment. To put this in perspective, it's two and a half million square feet under roof. Mo, how's, what's a square foot, what's an under roof here? Square feet, do you think? About 270,000 in this whole complex. That's 200, over, how many millions of two and a half million square feet? It's a gigantic facility. And around that comes things like the rail spur that we brought in to get people in and out and how that's going to bring further growth into that area. 160 acres, 500 jobs, and it'll be completed, it's being completed now, and we'll start ramping up. I see Rick John from uh, Sedona, who's also helping with staffing up working with Sterilite to make that happen, Sedona Services, and many others all interacting here. And as I talk about this, and I should have mentioned it earlier, the importance of not only thanking Mo and Rhythm City, but also to help us make this in the Rotary Club, I want to thank the Chamber. Uh, their involvement with all of the economic development initiatives we're doing, also helping to put this on today, we can't thank you enough. And I know we're in the process of a new CEO search coming up, and we're just excited to meet the new person, whoever that will be narrowing that process, I know it'll be a chance for the community to meet some of the candidates for that job. So thank you for all the work that you do as well. Our next one uh, is Elmore Corners. And you say, Elmore Corners, what's that? Well, Elmore, this where we're sitting right now, obviously it's expanded. And the plan was, if you talk, there's the old chicken or the egg kind of a discussion. We'll move here, but what is it gonna look like? And the other one is say, well, uh, what are we gonna do? Should we build now or wait until we see? And in discussions with all the landowners, with the people from Rhythm, with Rhythm City, we decided to get together and say, what do we want this to look like? We have a one-time shot to make something really good happen here. So we came up with this. We invited and got involved, um, Vanderwall and Associates, and came up with an overlay district that says, this is what it could look like. So we're going out to talk to people about potential development. This is what we're envisioning. Not something at this level, but something at this level and try to engage people to get involved. And then let's get all of us involved. Because example, I'm gonna give a shout out to Mayor Gallagher when they're building their new Betplex. This kind of development is good for that too. Because we're gonna have activity going on there and it, we're not that far away from this kind of a complex, the stuff we're talking about. They will complement each other. It's not a matter of fighting over who gets it, the heck with everybody else, it's a matter of how can we come together to make some great things happen in our community. And I think that's important. Uh, also, I think uh, Mayor Acri couldn't come at the last minute. She was scheduled to be here as well as Mayor Freeman. Obviously, we're coming up with some potential snow, and they may be tied up with that. Um, but again, I want to thank all of the mayors, because this is something we're looking at the Quad Cities as a whole, and that's extremely important. Elmore Corners is that district area where some people say, you think around the country, there's that area you want to go to. Well, Elmore Corners is one of those. And we're going to try to build that brand, help market that, help work with the Rhythm City Casino, work with Dave Mills and Mill Chevrolet, and the other businesses along this whole end, extending Elmore into a, not only a retail area, but a mixed-use area that brings people from around this whole area. 
that whole tying in from the airport all the way up to 80, what's that all going to look like? And this is all part of that long-term division uh, the development that we're talking about related to the vision for Q2030. Our next one, we're going to talk about Costco. You know, it's kind of funny as we were going, I, uh, while I was in the process of being elected, uh, going through that process, I was at St. Ambrose as I was teaching there, and they asked me to come and talk about some stuff. And a lot of students were sitting there, and I happened to mention all this stuff we were doing, mention Costco, and everybody started, started applauding. So it's all relative of what, what uh, it gets you excited. But a lot of people, I know Corey for one, likes the idea of having a Costco here. Um, but again, I got a chance to go visit what they were doing, meet the people in, involved, and I want to make a commitment to the community. We know there's issues that people are concerned with around getting in and out of there where it's located. One thing dealing with the private sector, they make a decision where they need to be for their market, for their business model. But we've made a commitment that we're going to make sure with the road work we already got planned and 53rd and all those kind of projects that we're going to be doing and making it more easy, easy to get in and out of there. And that's also good on a couple of levels. Not only does it bring a job that has very high paying people that stay for a long period of time, they've got a, a, almost a 90, 95, I think, percent uh, uh, retention rate. So these aren't people that come in, work for a few days, and go somewhere else. They stay. They had benefits. They whatever. They're good paying jobs. Uh, but that's something also that delineates us from many other communities. We've got one of those kind of things here. Um, that in addition to, which we found when that became known, a number of the other like organizations start talking about renovation plans. And they want to be competitive. That's how the system works. And again, it's more jobs for roads, it's more jobs for building, and it's more jobs for the people once those buildings are developed. And that, by the way, say, keep the Costco up there. Now, that little kid in the picture, I have to share, that's Corey's son. Isn't he the cutest little guy? Uh, but that's great. Next. Um, but on the same note, as I said, the area up by Eastern Iowa Industrial Park is a overnight success that took 20 years. We've got, we have to be responsible to look at the next 20 years. And I-80 and 80 is a good area for that. So we're already looking at, as an example, extending. We, need, we have about 700 acres of possibility there. So we're committed to taking a look at doing that. Um, we need to have a certified site. What really turned so if you, maybe some of you know and some of you don't know, if you're going to have a site, what really got those two, craft in particular, was it was a certified site. It doesn't mean whether well, some farmland out there, would you come and move here? All that work was done putting details together to make stuff happen. And I think that was in place. So we're looking at having another certified site, starting to work on that now. Make sure there's infrastructure, there's sewer, there's water, all that stuff's in place as we move that forward. And the first step is to extend the west side diversion tunnel and, uh, and that first two phases of that sewer work is estimated to be about $8 million. We're looking at moving forward with that. We can't do all of it at once, but we're starting to move forward and make sure we're prepared for the next one. Think about the possibilities there. And that whole area is in the Davenport School District. That's also equally important to us as well. Next slide. Another big addition here, uh, one of our largest employers is Genesis. And if you see there the amount of labor that was involved with building that facility, the amount of work that was done, I think there was about $150 million worth of development. Um, they have 12 new surgical suites, three new floors of, uh, of patient, inpatient room, expanded emergency, 65, 64 private rooms as well, and a lot of employees. They made a big commitment in Davenport, and we think that's equally important. Another, there's a lot of highlights we're going to do that I'll, to share as well. If you haven't seen that, taking a walk through, it's really cool going up where the helicopter lands on top. It's a great view of the city up there, too, um, as an example. Um, our downtown, and I see Kyle Carter here from the Downtown Davenport Partnership. Uh, Kyle is one of the most exciting uh, uh, cheerleaders for downtown that I've known, and, uh, and the work continues and a lot to be excited about. This is a picture from the up on the top of the new current hotel. If you haven't been there, that's another exciting thing. People are looking excited to not only come and visit and to stay there, but also to be equally involved um, with another one of those things, say, wow, Davenport has one of those things, one of those interesting activities. Sixty million in completed projects by the, uh, by the opening of the, the current. And we're looking at, in addition to $82 million worth of development currently underway. And one of those, I don't know if Brad got here today, Brad Martel, uh, there's Brad, but one is an exciting additional YMCA site. And that's going to be another in that multiple million dollar range 
Um, but that's one that, again, continuing the growth that's going to happen on downtown. East, Devon, east side of downtown is growing rapidly, but also amount of people moving downtown. And I think we're at a, let me get the exact number, we're like about a 97% occupancy rate. Am I right, Kyle? Yeah. So it's one of those things people are concerned. You keep building all that stuff, well, people keep moving into them. And that's important as well. That has a challenges for us in that, in fact, we now have another neighborhood. People are walking their dogs. They're walking down the street. They're going out to eat. They're looking for places to do their retail shopping, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a lot of initiatives happening. This is a good example. That new sign, I think you see that picture. Colonel Talkie's in the picture with us. Uh, there's a number of us saying, welcome people from Davenport from the Arsenal Island. Those food trucks, uh, amazingly successful. People like the idea. And I was recently in some other cities, and many of you have as well. There's people, when they go to lunch, they go out and go to a food truck. It's not, and again, we were very cautious and very um, took into consideration the land-based units. This was not to usurp any of that ability. It's to build upon that enthusiasm so we have more people going to that area for lunch or dinner or whatever. And we think that's important as well. The next one is we got to salute Eastern Iowa Community College District and their new urban campus. That's in the middle of a growing neighborhood downtown. And the area next to it was the RME, the River Music Experience, one of their Live at Five events. You see a lot of people walking around downtown. I was down there last Friday night, and it was amazing the amount of people you saw. They were at going to a play, they were having dinner, they were just living downtown. And I think that's extremely important to understand the vibrancy of downtown adds to the vibrancy of our entire city. Um, we had, a, again, downtown, we had the first alternating currents concert this year. It's not a concert, it's a, it's a festival event. It's a variety of things. Similar to Austin, Texas, where they have those kind of activities. People come, whether it's music and juggling and magicians and all that different comes, all coming together, creating some synergies and excitement. Those are a few of the entities that were there. Becky Fest, which I'm not exactly sure what that is yet, but um, Kyle will have to tell me afterward. Uh, but it sounds like fun. I know a lot of Beckys, and they all seem to be fun. Uh, but, but see what all of those, all of those are uh, as an example. But again, music, film, art, and comedy. Um, and I think my sons who are here, Frank and Jake were here, and I think both of them went to a number of those events as well downtown. The next one, um, this is also one of those core things, a well-protected community. Um, that's our police chief, and uh, the reason that's an important picture is we've got to find ways of getting the community at large, the kids involved, that we all want to come together. It can't be one saying, you've got to fix this, and the other one saying, no, you've got to fix this. It's a matter of we have to make sure. And I just want you to know, as we move forward, it's important to understand we, I hear a lot about what about the re increases of potentially violence or, or crime. As I was in D.C. recently and talking with mayors literally from the country, this isn't a Davenport issue. This isn't even a Quad City issue. This is a regional and national challenge that we have to deal with. And I, want you, I promise you, if someone commits a crime in Davenport, they will be arrested. That's not what this is about. We'll arrest them all. Our challenge, our challenge as a community, is to prevent this from happening in the first place. Now, one of the things we're talking about is I was able to swear in, swear in 10 new officers. We know that's important. We also have, um, we've done a police and fire operational study. That's also important. Uh, through a partnership with a joint initiative with the Davenport Schools, the Bechtel Trust, and the City of Davenport, we're hiring four additional officers on top of the ones we have for a three-year program. And we're already committed to finding out how do we get the next three years after that and continue that. So having police officers more on the street, sure it helps. Response helps. But the reality of it is we're still arresting everybody. It's more building those relationships in the schools and throughout the community is extremely important. And I think as we, as we look forward to that as well, um, the community policing is another important thing. It's not a matter of, I, I've been to all the briefings. And it's not, a, not every single briefing, but I've been to one of each shift's briefings. And they're not talking about, let's go out and arrest people. Let's go out and develop relationships, find out how we can intervene where it's necessary, how we can make a difference and be preventative and proactive. And that's what community, community policing is why. Um, you know, I think there's, there's so many 
uh, individuals that I met in our NETS units that are out working in the community. That's what this is about. And one of the other things we're talking about is, um, in addition to that one, I think it's on our next slide, uh, we did an evaluation through a police and fire a matrix consulting company, and that was basically looking at our efficiency. We have two, I, I don't know, we may be the only two, or very few, certified, accredited police and fire departments in the state. I know there weren't many. I don't know how many there are, but there weren't many. Uh, we're the only Parks and Rec accredited Parks and Rec in the state, uh, as an example. So we take accreditation and training seriously. But they both, both the chiefs said, this is a good idea. Let's look at if we can be more efficient. So that's what's come out of this. And we're going to be sharing tomorrow that final report of what we found out. Um, implementation strategies will come. But one of the things that come out of it, my colleague, uh, Mayor Gallagher, and uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, Board of Supervisors Chairman Kenobi were on the uh, Scott Emergency Communication Center board. How can we be more responsive, finding ways to be more efficient in that? That's already one of the discussions came out of the police and fire operational study that we're already starting to implement. How can we be more efficient, but at the same time making sure that we can move forward? And one of the other items is a juvenile assessment center. The chief brought it to our attention. Uh, that's where, right now, if you have kids, the worst place to deal with kids in difficulty is in jail. Okay, the issue here is an assessment center, all resources in the community, whether it be YMCA, whether it be the city group, whether it be Friendly, uh, friendly House, United Neighbors, uh, when they were still around in here doing their work, but that type of work, also family resources, all coming together with the state, with the city, to put an assessment together to get the kids need the help that they need. That's all part of this process. Okay, and we're committed to that as well. Um, also sustainable infrastructure, I'm going to make sure I stay on. I haven't got a, a sign yet. Uh, oh, yes, I did. I did do a sign. I have 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to move this baby along. Okay. Uh, that's actually a me in that picture with a, one of our street crews. They do phenomenal work. And we're doing streets and sewers all over the community that we're doing with as well because we have an aging infrastructure and we know that. And we're trying to work on that very effectively. Um, the um, Rockingham Road, uh, Kimberly and Division, Veterans Memorial Parkway, Brady Street, Eastern Avenue, all that stuff is happening. And we rehabilitated existing roads. Um, you can see here's some other work we're doing, and now we're looking at our CIP program, our capital improvement program. 18 million for street sewers and infrastructure in this upcoming year. We're continuing to make a commitment. My colleagues are continuing to come together to make a commitment for this important work. And that's important that we keep up the condition of our, of our communities. And again, one of the big things was it's not just east side. We made a big investment in Rockingham Road on West, West Davenport. That's also equally important as we move that forward. And there's a whole list of possible, uh, you've seen them all over town, work that we're doing as we move forward. Um, and again, you can see $100 million for street sewers and infrastructure over a six year period. We think that's what you as citizens want your tax dollars to invest it in, so part of that money will be used for that. And I think that's extremely important. Um, and again, streets and sewers, they're pretty self-explanatory as we move that forward. Our next one is Davenport Go. That's a multimodal study because we know we hear from people too. It's not just cars, but it's bicycles, it's walking, it's all of those. And we're doing that study and we're looking at actually upcoming open house on February 19th to see the final plan for what that's going to look like. You can see already, you're probably, if it's, I'm getting tired talking about it, you must be getting tired hearing all the things we're doing. Uh, pretty exciting. Um, but that's one other thing. Next was Main Street Landing. That's the base of the sky bridge. That's a beautiful picture on that one. Um, it looked a lot different in the last two years. You know, we took down the dock was happening in that period. We've cleaning it up. Let's keep rolling through those. This has been all, all been torn up, take all out of the parking, put in seating as we move it forward. Uh, we're preparing the boats leaving, and we've got another one that's coming up here in a minute. Uh, that's what the dock, the uh, barge looked like in the Port of Cachair. And working with Rhythm City, we were able to get that removed. There's the barge leaving. Uh, as an example, more cleaning up to do. And now this is the same view looking off of the sky bridge as an example right here that's been opened up. What's next? Okay, it's what's next. And here's some plans that we have. This is very preliminary, but you can see opportunities to keep sight lines all the way up into the city uh, from the river. One of our challenges, not only in, connect this, the riverfront to the city, but keep the city to the riverfront. How make that an open flowing pattern that we can engage? and have people who want to drive from around the community past a lot of phenomenally great parks to come to this one. 
and get involved in that. So let's go to the next slide, please. We hired a, another a company to do uh, guidelines. So it doesn't look hodgepodge. We got a plan of what this is going to look like. Next slide, please. Even to the point of the type of furniture and brick uh, a, a applications and so forth. Next one. This is what we, one of the things we're envisioning happening. You can see it co combines uh, a, not just a parking lot, but an area to park, potentially put food trucks, potentially have grass. You can sit on the planters around it. This is what we're calling N5, which is the area uh, just to the east of the sky bridge. Uh, north of the railroad tracks in that area, in that general direction. Uh, something that we're looking at undertaking this year, starting construction of that this year. Next picture. Then this is the future, S1. These are plans, these are, are ideas and concepts. We got work to do, but one of the things I found both in Bonn, Germany and in DC, there are companies outside of the traditional public uh, funding sources who are looking to make investments in sustainable infrastructure. So this would not only be beautiful, uh, but it's also be sustainable. And that's extremely important as we move forward. Um, we have regional assets, and let's go through these. You can see inclusive play, and that's the one we talked about, the miracle field. You know, what would be the one where you're sitting outside, and you're the one kid who can't get on the field. All the other friends go out to play, and you have to sit outside. We want to correct that with miracle field and the other initiatives. Make sure everybody has an equal access. Next picture. This is Vandeveer Park. Our Vandeveer Park, beautiful, as, as an example as well. Um, Fedgevary, our different playgrounds, the different activities that we have throughout the community, experience that. Junior Theater, again, there was a renovation done there as well. It's a great destination for a lot of period, way to experience Davenport. Um, we have uh, one is Roosevelt Center, the spray ground, and the other being uh, River's Edge, activities that are going on. And also event destination, we go to the next one, is Modern Woodman Park, rated number one ball, minor league ballpark in the country. We've added a carousel and other uh, activities. Again, there's many families that are coming down to kids, and maybe the mom and dad aren't too keen on necessarily watching baseball, but they're all coming down to bring the whole family down to make that experience, uh, that event destination. And Ragby is coming here, thanks to Joe Taylor and, and the Convention Visit Bureau for helping us with that. They're going to be landing here this year, and we're hoping to be in 2020, um, 2022, I mean, which will be the 50th anniversary of Ragbri. Same weekend of the BICS, it's the largest Iowa conglomeration of people on a sport-related festival anywhere when the, both Ragbri and the BICS happen in that weekend. Um, creating connections, this was one uh, Dave Johnston was good, is chairing the Heart Walk. That was a group when Rick John did it last year, us coming together with, on the Heart Walk. There's the new Davenport uh, Central Pool, which we unveiled in the last year and a half. But there's also pictures of their opening the, the Richard R. Bittner uh, Re Wellness and Recreation Center on Palmer's campus and the St. Ambrose New Wellness Center being on their campus, all in Davenport. And uh, the continuing work with Dr. Tate, and that picture had Linda Hayes, one of the school board members, being involved and active and involved. We, have to, we, we are in this together, and we want to continue to work on those. Our next picture, there's a picture, again, the arsenal is extremely important to us. There's a picture of Colonel Talkie in his best-looking outfit there, too, by the way. Um, but we were at one of the events, again, tremendous partners that we have with the arsenal. Uh, about 1,000 employees on the arsenal live in, in, in Iowa, and that's important. There's also the picture of Alderman Matson, who's my mayor pro tem, at a um, Memorial Day celebration. We're meeting in another one of the events. And then on the left there is Colonel, um, uh, Colonel Gamble and Colonel Letcher and others, and Colonel Talkie's in that picture, too, getting a briefing about what we're doing. And Mayor Gallagher was in that picture with me. Coming together in partnership to make stuff happen. This last, the last picture in this group, you can see the Putnam and the Figgy are also extremely important to us. Um, Mayor Tomes and I at an event over at the Arsenal. We were at the NAACP event, and there was Chief... Uh, Sikorsky and Major Bladel were there in attendance at that. At the Cinco de Mayo celebration in the lower left, that young lady came out and stuck out her hand, and sure enough, I went up and danced with her. Uh, so I think that was another opportunity for us. The last one is at LULAC on, as you're looking at the screen to your left, uh, that's the opening of the Ann Ambrose Center and then meeting with the governor. One of the things we have to understand, she was here in town, it's important for us, the chambers help, and all of us coming together to, to access all the resources we can, regardless of your political party, regardless of all that kind of stuff, we have to work together to make stuff happen. 
and we've got to bring resources here to our community to make sure that we can invest in our community as much as we possibly can. And to sum up, and I think I'm pretty much pretty close here, right? All right. Um, Davenport is thriving and vibrant and strong and I, in all levels. Things are coming. People are wanting to move here. Events are coming here. Financial situation is really good. Our economy is growing and it's continuing to grow. We are financially stable and very strong. And that's important. That's important. Um, investing in infrastructure. We're also collaborating regionally. When I ever make a presentation, I used to say I'm honored to represent the 103,000 people of Davenport, but I'm equally delighted to be able to represent the 450,000 people in the Quad Cities. People will move here for a $450,000, 450,000 people region as opposed to any individual city. Together we are stronger, and that's why we are regionally collaborating. We are committed to public safety. It's something that's important for all of us, and we're committed to that. Not only to arresting the bad guys, but to getting in early enough so we don't have any. That's our focus as we move forward with that. And lastly, we know we have a beautiful riverfront. We have nine miles of riverfront. We want to make it a world-class one. And we have plans that are in place, working with the council, working with all of you to make that happen. So with that, I want to thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you for, and literally thank all of you, because what we went through isn't one person, isn't 10 people with a mayor, it isn't anything. It's all of us coming together. Public, private, education, different cities, different municipalities, all of us coming together to make a difference in this community. We can't do it without you. And we need you to do it, so let's get it done. Thank you very much. I will be around for a few minutes uh, if anybody wants to talk. And uh, if not, have a wonderful day and take care of all those uh, kids that I think uh, were anticipating a little snow. I want you to know, I know we'd arrived when I got, a, I got a call from a citizen last week when we had the snowstorm who was complaining that we were cleaning the streets too often. That's true. What are you doing? You're wasting money. You've been in my street three times now. Uh, so anyway, we hope we can say that on the next couple of inches of snow we might get. But if not, thank you all very much.